Hi, Shraddha. How are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Uh, sure. This is Shraddha Khandelwal from uh, Gujarat and uh, I'm a BSc graduate. I have total seven years of experience. Uh, wherein I was with uh, non-IT for four years and three years I have IT experience. Mm -hmm. I was with the uh, Venus Cyber Tech Private Limited where I worked for two projects. That is um, as admin CA internal portal and uh, doctor health. These are my two projects and where I used to handle all the doctor's records, their present, uh, uh, the, the, the doctor records, whether they are taking any leaves, uh, their personal details. Uh, I we used to track the complete doctor and patient's record in that particular projects. Okay, okay, sounds great. Okay, so how many years of experience you have with respect to IT and how many years of experience you have in manual testing and in test automation? Um, yes, for I have manual testing, I have three years of experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any any did you get any chance to work in automation testing? No, sir, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say if I tell you, you have to give the scale from one to ten, ten being the highest and one being the lowest based on the knowledge of automation testing. So, how many points you will give to yours? Actually, I'm learning automation. I have mm. just enrolled myself in an automation course. So I can just give yeah. one point because uh, they are just giving yeah. us the uh, theoretical mm. knowledge as of now. They didn't okay. even start with practical. Mm. So oh. I cannot rate myself. Mm -hmm. I just work with manuals. So I don't have any experience with automation. Okay. Okay. No worries. Now, if this kind of question is asked to you in a real-time interview, <clears throat> right? So what you have to tell is uh, in the three years of your testing experience, the project in which you were working, that was a manual testing project only. And uh, you or some of your team members also proposed a plan to the client or maybe to the management to switch from uh, manual testing to automation. Not everything, but at least 40 to 50 percent. But somehow they were not convinced. They were not OK with the cost involved with the automation. Right. And that's why you also didn't get opportunity to work in the automation. This is how you can smartly deal with such kind of questions okay then you can sure. tell okay so apart from that now i have also started learning automation as i did not get opportunity within the company within the organization so as a part of uh, uh, my uh, career growth i have taken that initiative to learn automation testing and i have myself uh, enrolled in some particular xyz course in order to groom myself for test automation yes okay. So this looks good now. <clears throat> okay. So how do you start your day? Yes. Uh, I start, I used to start my day, but I used to log in into my Jira and I used to check for my pending work, if any pending work, if any pending test cases are there. And I used to continue. And if any new test cases have been assigned and before that we used to have a quick meeting with our manager, um, meeting that what, what was done till yesterday and what is going to be, uh, what are we going to do, what are the plans for today and how many test cases is going to assign today for that particular day. And any pending test cases also will be done with that day only. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were working in a team and there was a team lead and manager with whom you used to discuss your roles and responsibilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now consider a scenario where uh, the manager or team lead is not available today, maybe on a sick leave or some emergency leave. So he has dropped a message that he won't be available today. Then, then how will you start your day? Because you don't know there will be someone to discuss the work with you, right? Yes, so we will be contacting the senior person, either the developer, that if any... Uh, Okay, okay, pen, uh, means like I will be doing my pending work. First of all, I will be doing my pending work and I will wait if my, um, uh, what you say, my this um, assign new assigned work. First, I will complete my pending work and if manager is not there, I will check with the senior person or I will check with the developer that any changes are there and uh, coordinating with him, we will proceed further. Mm -hmm. So what you will do is you will proactively, maybe you can have a look in the Jira or you can have a look at the confluence or if any email has been circulated, right? Because manager or team lead is not available. So you will have to proactively 
take that walk that okay this much walk is there so now three members are there so if for example six stories are six user stories are there so you can assign two two user stories to each one of you right that's how you can yeah. divide the work so you will yes. be taking initiative to manage the team in absence of team lead or manager's presence right that's how you have to tell so this this is again a part of managerial interview question that has been asked so generally when you will apply in the real time interviews you will go for the company's interview so what will happen the first round they will be taking is a technical interview second round the yes. managerial round will be there so over there this kind of situational based questions will be asked in the technical everything related to technical things will be asked but in managerial how do you respond to some situation how do you act to some particular scenario that kind of questions are being asked okay so adding one more question to that uh, let's say you have two members in your team and your manager is there in the office but he is somewhat uh, in a conference room and he is uh, working on a critical task you cannot go inside right so now there are two members uh, available with you who are sitting with you and the developer comes to you and they tell you that uh, yesterday they had a support call with the client and client has raised an uh, issue it's a p0 blocker ticket which needs to be worked on or which needs to be reproduced from the tester's point of view so so they come to you and now they assign you this task right so which task will you work on you will you continue on your daily routine task or will you continue on this customer task uh see like when when my test lead is not around and mm -hmm. if some developer comes and he tells me that this is an uh, important work mm -hmm. so i will look for the priority that mm -hmm. whether my pending work is uh, what is the deadline of my pending work Mm. If it is two days, so then I will try to complete my pending work. And if it is like if I have time to complete my pending work within a day or two, then mm. I will check whether the work which has been provided by the developer, how much is the priority of that. Mm. That if it is a very critical situation and if it needs to be urgently, if it needs to be, the response should be given within two to three hours. And I will definitely look into that issue mm -hmm. first. So we have to check for the priority also. Right. So that's a good answer. You will check for the priority. And second thing is, see, the developer is coming to you. They had a client call yesterday. He's telling it's a P0 bug. So definitely that's going to be a P0 priority for you. The pending task that you have with yourself, you can allocate it to the rest of the two or three members who are there with you. And in your absence of the team lead or manager, you can send an email and loop him, loop manager or team lead in the email and communicate so that the team yes, lead or manager... I got a call from developer that I need to complete this task first as it's a P0 task mm -hmm. and my pending task can be uh, divided among the other team members. Correct, correct. So that's how the approach you have to take. Now, let's say you got a requirement, you got a user story to test. Okay. Which are the various things that you will proceed for testing? You won't directly jump into the testing, right? You will be, for example, you will be involved in test case writing right so which are the various action items which are the various activities as a part of tester that you will do from your side i didn't understand the question sir. okay okay no worries so let me come again you got a user story that is assigned on okay. your team okay now you have to test that story now which are the different activities which are the different things that as a part of process as a part of tester that you will do before starting test case execution? I will check for the status. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I will also check for the scenario, means what exactly the scenario is. And uh, I will check for the test. I will accordingly, I will prepare test steps that these to, to complete this test case, I have to follow these steps. And what is the expected result? So if this is the expected result, I have to check what is the expected result. If this is the expected result, then I will jump on to the conclusion that this should be my actual result. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first, the very first activity from scratch that you will start, you will start writing test cases. You will get those test cases reviewed, right? Then there are two kinds of test case review that you can have. One is the test case review with, within your team members. One is the test case review with the developer, right? The developer or the 
coding team who is working on that particular user story. You will get those test cases reviewed by them. Once the review is done, they will give you some feedback. If they don't, then it's fine. If they give you some feedback, you will have to update your test cases, right? And you will have to uh, check every day. For example, if any update has come in that particular user story from the client side. So you will check the JIRA. You will uh, keep a check on the history of that particular ticket. If any acceptance criteria or if any point has been incorporated from the client side so that you will make sure. And then you will execute the test cases. Finally, you will share the test results with everyone, right? And then you will also uh, attach your test results in the JIRA, right? Is that clear? Yes. So that's how you will do. Okay, now let's move to the next question. For some time, I will just switch off the video. No worries, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... What is the difference between verification and validation? Yes, uh, verification means whether we are checking the product, right? I can give you with the example also, mm -hmm. uh, whether we are giving the product, right? First, I will be telling about the verification. Verification is something I will check whether I am doing the product, right? Means I have ordered the pizza. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to a restaurant. I have ordered a pizza and whether I have received, I will just see, and I can get on to the conclusion that yes, I have ordered the pizza. Mm. Validation comes where in the steps, whether I will check I am I'm, I'm doing the right to product. Means when I taste the pizza, I will have the flavor of the pizza, what all the ingredients are there. That comes the validation part. Okay. So first would be verification means it is just a documentation part. Mm. It is just only about the meeting part. It is just about the discussion part. Mm. Validation comes when we are checking the entire software. What is the inbuilt? What is the output of the software? Uh, how many test cases we have done? And uh, is the result, the expected result, uh, what uh, the means are the result it is we have found is as per the expected or not. Mm -hmm. okay. That is the validation. Okay. Okay, now consider a scenario where one user story was assigned to you for testing and you started your day, for example, at 10 a.m. And by 10.30, 10.45, you came to know that there is some internal exception going on uh, that you have found while testing that particular user story, right? There is some exception because of which the entire story is blocked. You cannot proceed for testing in that particular scenario. So what will you do? I will recheck it again. Hmm. What exactly happened to that particular user story? Hmm. And uh, I will try to come to the, con uh, I will try to see that uh, what was the result of it, why I'm not able to end because of some technical glitch it is there or whether there is an issue in the coding. So I will try to solve it from my end. If I'm not able to do it, then I will uh, go to the test lead. Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll go to the test lead. Okay, now if test lead is also not available, then? I will check for the priority. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what you can do, you can approach developer and you can show him your machine that this particular environment is there in which this particular user story is supposed to work. This is the uh, test case scenario. This is the test scenario that you have tested. Maybe for this particular screen, it's not working. Maybe for this particular user, it's not working. And you can have a discussion with them. And at the end of, uh, at the, end of the discussion, you can just uh, drop an email or you can just communicate in your Skype channel or in the messenger, whichever you are using, that this particular things are not working. It has been discussed and concluded with the developer. Right? Okay. Now, there are 650 test cases that you have to execute and you have only two days of time, right? So you came to know on Monday morning that you have to execute and give sign off for some particular functionality or feature that has 650 test cases. You have only two days with you. What will be your approach and what will be your strategy? Yes, uh, we will check like if I have, I have assigned 200, 600, 650, right? 650 mm -hmm. test cases. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely my answer would be we will segregate the test cases accordingly as per the priority. 
okay we will check that into this particular iterative period iteration into this particular first meeting 15 days what all test cases needs to be released we will work on that particular test cases and in that also we can segregate that this is going to be the priority customer pehle khol ke dekhega to home page khol ke dekhega directly contact us mein nahi jayega to hum log pehle ye koshish karenge ki hum log pehle home page home screen sahi tarike se build kar de so hmm. that is my wife first priority that ha hamara home page sahi tarike se ready ho gaya hai first iterative meeting mein main kal tak ke ye home page release kar sakti hu hmm. then the contact us page would be coming into the second day so we will segregate hmm. as per the requirement hmm. okay you will segregate as per the requirement and uh, you will also uh, not only segregation as per requirement but in the test case also you will have some priority high medium low so you will first focus on high test cases then you will also see which are the impacted areas that has been recently done with respect to that feature or functionality there might be some x feature which was developed six months back, which does not has any impact. And there are 125 test cases of those things. So those things are automatically isolated, right? So you will perform just smoke test, no need to perform everything. Okay, now is my screen visible? Hmm. Hmm. So there is an application, for example, e-commerce website, you are testing Flipkart, right? And you want to buy a pen. Right now, you have added that item two times to the cart using add to the cart, using add to cart option in the e-commerce website. You have added that particular object two times, but in the cart, only one entry of for that item should be displayed with quantity S2. So how will you test this? I will read the question again. I have an right. application. I'm, I'm, I'm purchasing a pen. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, I'm on I'm doing a online shopping. I want to buy a pen, mm. so I have added two items with that cart using two cart buttons. But in the cart, only one entry or an item should be displayed. Mm. You have an application like so. So you can try to understand the above question. I am drafting other question beneath it. Okay, so don't get confused. This is a different question and this is a different question that I am making. Okay. Uh, sir, here my question first one, I will repeat the question whether I, whatever I understood is correct or not. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want to buy a pen. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, I am clicking on add to cart button. Mm -hmm. So once I click on the add to cart button, it is accepting. But mm -hmm. when I click on the, uh, when I'm writing the quantity two, it is not taking, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So over here, the scenario is, you want to buy some XYZ or pen or pencil something and you have added that item two times using add to the cart button. So when you are adding that item two times, so automatically in the quantity two will come, right? But yes. for that particular item, that row number, that line item would be one. But 
uh, after that in the quantity QTY option, text box two will be displayed, right? So you have to test this particular feature. So how will you test this? So this is a feature. This is a functionality that you have, you are supposed to test. As per my thing, I will check uh, the cart option. I will check with developer, not developer. I will check whether, uh, why the cart option is not accepting quantity two. No, no, it is accepting quantity two. See, you added, you added this item two times. So it is accepting quantity as two. So it is working fine. It is working normally, right? Which are the other scenarios? So how, how will you test this particular line item? So for example, let me give you a hint. Uh, you have tested with a pen. That is one option, right? You can add that particular item three times, four times, right? You can add it with a count of even number. You can add it with a count of odd number, right? And then you can test. You can also remove the those items from the cart and then you can see whether the quantity is getting updated or not, right? So instead of telling you that, how will you test add to cart option? I just came up with this particular scenario, right? So they won't tell you in the interview directly that this is supposed to be tested, but see what you have to test in this particular question. It is pretty simple now that you have to test add to cart option, right? And this is the flow that I have written that you have added that particular item two times to the cart, right? So in the, in the cart, one entry for the item will be displayed and it will be displayed as quantity two. Other scenario that you can come up with is you can add two times this particular item pen. For example, apart from pen, you also have to uh, order ink rubber. So you can also add two times ink rubber and then you can see whether the line item for ink rubber as well as pen is displayed individually along with the quantity. Those are to be ordered. Yes. Right. So, so this I have to check the card. Yes. This kind of permutation combinations you have to test. Simple. Okay. Yeah. So in this, so that's how they will ask. Sometimes they won't tell you what is the thing to, to be tested. They'll come up with this kind of requirement. And generally in testing also, if you see there is a user story that has got a lot of acceptance, right? Yeah. Sometimes those are epics. So again, in epic, those are user stories. So that's how it happens. Okay. Now let's take this question first. You have four screens in an application. Okay screen a screen b screen c and screen d you are supposed to come up with integration testing scenarios right i'm not asking you to write detailed level of test cases like prerequisite test steps test data actual result expected result just tell me one liner scenario how will you test this particular application and i'm interested more in the integration scenarios okay first we have to understand what is integration Hmm. Integration means so uh, when one module is compatible with the other or not. Hmm. Okay, so when I am able, when I am on screen A, hmm. okay, when I am on screen A, I should be able to check whether the screen B is working correctly or not. Hmm. Okay, so I can toggle my screen at the same time on one window page. I can open screen A, that hmm. could be home page, and second window page, I can open screen B, that could be uh, careers of that particular site. So mm. whether the both the screens are working at the same time or not, that is like integrating. Okay. So now I can see that yes, screen A, screen B ke saath mein sahi se kaam kar raha hai. Then I can close screen A. Phir B ke saath mein, main window pe mein C khol sakti so, so why are you trying to open different windows for different screens? toggle the screens whether they both are compatible with each other or not whether mm. they both are working with uh, at the same time or not so that is that is concurrent testing that you will be testing 
whether the screen is load, getting loaded for multiple users at single point of time. Okay, that is concurrent testing. Integration testing means, for example, screen A has some input data which will be processed and the output will be displayed on screen B. So that means screen okay. B has a dependency on some calculation that is done on screen A. Simultaneously, when you go from screen B to screen C, for example, screen B has some uh, data displayed in the uh, in the calculation, in the digital data. On screen C, you have those kind of data that you can read and you can compare with the history. Like earlier, what was displayed, now it is what is displayed. So screen A, B, C are integrated. Interrelated. Yeah, yeah. So that means data from one screen is passed on to another screen and it holds some importance. Now, for example, if in screen A, that particular data which is supposed to be calculated is not coming, then automatically screen B data will also not come because it is dependent on screen A. Right? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, yes. now you have to come up with integration testing scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Please go ahead. Yeah. I can use the login page of a mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. Okay. So screen A is the login page mm -hmm. where I have uh, input my data that is login ID and my password. So once I have uh, input my login ID and password, it is taking me to the screen B, which is the home page of the screen B. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I have inputted something in the A, now it is taking me to the B. That means it is integrated, it is interrelated. With correct, the correct. Mm -hmm. So now you have taken uh, an example of login and home page, right? Uh -huh. This this can be an investment banking application, this can be an e-commerce based application. Now, tell me the generic integration scenarios. For example, generic, for example, when you enter alphanumeric data on screen A, it is processed correctly for screen B. When you enter special characters for screen A, it is processed correctly. When you enter only alphabetic, when you enter only numeric, right? Are we on the same page? Are you yes, understanding? Yes, I am. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. Means yes, the screen uh, means login id should be only alphabets it Password can be, should alphabets. be alphanumeric. yeah it can be alphabets alphanumeric and it can be any of the other application apart from login page that is also possible Are you, are you able to think on those lines? I'm just still stuck till screen B. Okay. Okay. So now you are stuck on screen B. Okay. So from screen B, so over here, you can ask interviewer the question that is like screen A is dependent on screen B. Is screen B also dependent on screen C or only on screen A? Right. So, because uh, my, my question till mine or uh, as per my thinking, mm -hmm. screen A login page. Is depend uh, B is dependent on A. Hmm. Hmm. Under tabhi ja sakte, tab aapke paas mein ID and password hai. Right, right. Okay. But, so screen hmm. A agya hai, mere paas mein now B. Now hmm. I'm not sure whether this B uh, C is dependent on B or not. Yeah. So so I, so what what you have to think? Don't think that this is login page. Don't think that this is the next page. Think these are any four screens that are within the application. It might be excluding logging excluding logout any four screens for example there is a 20 page of application you have these four screens the very first thing you will ask which screen is dependent on which screen which screens are integrated right so those are the analysis that you have to do okay okay so let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video we are supposed to come up with the integration test scenarios for 
these particular screens. So just put those things in the comment section of this video. Okay. Okay, Shraddha, uh, I'm done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? No, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, uh, I would really like to thank you because in a, such a short turnaround of time, you came online and we were able to connect on Zoom. Right. So thank you so much. My and yeah, all the best for My you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And all thank the best you. for your future. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.